Imagine you are working on a project that follows clean architecture. How do you call a REST service from a feature without breaking the dependency rule? The business logic of this feature is, of course, implemented in the use case layer. Suppose one aspect of this feature is to call the REST API of Nugget.org to fetch some metadata about Nugget packages. In clean architecture, such an external service is considered to be part of the frameworks layer. To encapsulate the access to this service, we create a small class called Nugget Client. Since the Nugget Client directly calls the Nugget.org REST API, we place it in the frameworks layer as well. If we were to call the Nugget Client directly from our feature, even through an interface, this would violate the dependency rule. To resolve this, we move the interface to the use case layer. Now all dependencies crossing the circles point inwards, maintaining the dependency rule. How would this look like in code? In clean architecture, the frameworks layer and the use case layer are clearly separated. Therefore, we use at least two separate modules. One for the use case layer, where the module name often contains the word application, and one for the frameworks layer, where the module name often contains the word data access. We place the Nugget Client class, which communicates with the Nugget REST API, in a separate Nugget folder within the data access module. The iNugget Client interface and the Nugget specific data structures it uses, we place in the application module. If there were only a single feature interacting with the Nugget REST service, we could put the iNugget Client interface directly in the folder of this feature. However, if there were multiple features to interact with Nugget.org, we would place the iNugget Client interface in a folder next to the feature folders. The composition of the application in clean architecture typically happens in the main component, which is usually located in a dedicated module containing the application's entry point. Mission completed, right? Well, almost. What about testing? The Nugget Client class contains quite a bit of logic to properly pass the response and handle target framework formats supported by Nugget. We certainly want to add some tests to ensure that everything works as expected. We could write a test to directly test the Nugget client as is, but this would involve making real requests to the Nugget REST service, making the test slow and dependent on the availability of Nugget.org. A better approach would be to extract the code that passes the response from the Nugget REST API into a separate class. We could then create tests for the parsing logic using prepared response strings, effectively decoupling the tests from the Nugget REST API. If we now take a closer look, we realize the parser performs data conversion from the external form, which is JSON returned by the Nugget REST API, to the internal form used by the use cases. In clean architecture, such data conversion code belongs to the interface adapters layer. We could simply move the parser there and continue using it from the Nugget client, but to streamline the dependencies and the control flow, we do the following. We create a Nugget Client Adapter class in the Interface Adapters layer, which implements the iNugget Client interface located in the Use Case layer. We then create a new interface in the Adapter layer, which will be implemented by the Nugget Client in the Frameworks layer. In code, this approach would look like this. To keep the layers well separated, we create an Adapter module. We place the Nugget Client Adapter and the Nugget Response Parser classes in this module in a dedicated folder. The new interface for the frameworks layer we also place in the adapters module. This approach and the introduction of the new interface drastically simplifies the implementation of Nugget Client, reducing the need for excessive testing of this class. When it comes to testing the other layers, this design still allows us to test features, adapters and parsers independently, but it also enables us to easily include the parsing logic in our high-level feature acceptance tests by providing a simple fake Nugget Client which supplies prepared JSON response strings for respective requests. This way our acceptance tests closely simulate the behavior of our production system without depending on the external Nugget service, only relying on the official JSON schema provided by Nugget.org, ensuring stability and consistency. But what about the screaming architecture? That's probably a topic for a dedicated video, but as the project grows, we would organize it more towards vertical slices. This means we would create dedicated modules for each feature to keep all feature-related code together and also to ensure that independent features are well separated from each other. We would also create a dedicated module for all the code related to the Nugget REST service access. In this module, we would create separate folders for each layer, as separating them into individual modules would be over-engineering in this particular case. To still maintain separation of concerns within this Nugget module, we would require some architectural governance. One approach to achieve this, I explain in this video.